And the acoustics in the room are such that, that there should be a, a microphone used. Okay. So you made it clear how year after year you want to see an increase in both salmon and songbirds and so forth thriving in nature. I'm a permaculturalist, and one could argue, one being me, that if everyone became a permaculturalist, a natural thriving would occur. Now, some of my California friends have heard you say permaculturalists are essentially just a group of plagiarizers, and if they've plagiarized. If you didn't say that, I didn't hear you say it. Okay. No, I haven't said plagiarizers. Plagiarizers of native. Uh, okay, God, no, I haven't said that. Okay, so. I guess my question changes then. What, what do you think of permaculture? <laughs> um, no, I do feel very strongly about theft of, of native um, traditions or co-optation or, what's the word? There's a word for this and I'm, my mind's blanking. Appropriation, thank you. Um, but honestly, it's never occurred to me that permaculture would fall into that. So that's, that's one of those strange rumors that starts. Um, oh, I'm gonna go a different direction for just a second. I gotta tell you this. Um, this weird, horrible rumor started about me that I'm a supporter of NAMBLA, which is the National Association for Man Boy Love. It's a fucking incest organization. Oh my god, I've written so much about how horrible it is. Somehow that got started. And then I met, um, I'm at the post office one day, and I had, I, I had told them about, it's just a weird thing, I, I was telling them about this crazy thing they know me at the post office. Tiny town, it's like Mayberry or something. Anyway, it's, I'm, I'm telling them about this, and they're like, that's really terrible, it's horrible. And then, like two minutes later, somebody standing next to me say that they really like, um, they really like beetles. And I said, oh yeah, I love insects. And the person behind the counter said, wait a second, you love incest? <laughs> no, insects, insects. So that's how those rumors start. Everybody's gonna go home and say, okay. Anyway, um, only 2% of the IRA ever picked up weapons. 98% were doing support work. And this is true for any fighting force. And along those same lines, Kropotkin said that a lot of revolutions have failed because of bread. And my friend George Draffin talks about the number 60 days because after 60 days you die of starvation. It doesn't matter what politics you've got, you die of starvation. It doesn't matter what sort of analysis you've got, people die in 60 days. And this culture systematically, like any good abusive culture, separates us from the source of all life. One of the reasons that we don't fight back is because our experience is that our food comes from the grocery store and our water comes from the tap. And you will defend to the death the system that brings those to you. So permaculture and the whole locavore movement and CSAs, I think, are absolutely crucial. And you're waiting for the butt, which will come in a minute. And I think they're crucial and important and vital, and we can just look into the source under all those words. A problem I have with some of the permaculture movement is that there are some who perceive themselves as an alternative movement as opposed to an oppositional movement. And they Ooh, I could use a big word. I hope I use it correctly. Abjure? Is that the right word? They don't, they, they don't like. Abjure, I, I like abjure, though. I'll just, I'm going to use it. We'll pretend it's the right word. Um, I'm a writer, so I get to do that. Um, <laughs> they, they, they actively oppose political involvement. And the same is true for a lot of sort of life voters and a lot of sort of transition town people. Who, and I find that at best disturbing. I wish that, okay, one of the things I hate the Founding Fathers, I'm gonna get shot for that, um, but one of the smart things that the American patriots did is the same time they're fighting the British, they set up alternative court systems, alternative food systems. They set those up so they would not have to rely on the British. That's one reason people in the United States, by the way, are, tea drink are coffee drinkers instead of tea drinkers. Because of the, the boycott of tea. Because they didn't want to be unpatriotic to the new revolutionary movement. So they didn't drink tea. And 
So I think, I told this story earlier today, and I love this story, that the Black Panthers wanted to have a Congress, and they were going to have it in Philadelphia, and they couldn't find a meeting house. And then the Quakers offered their meeting house, and they did this despite their disagreement with the Panthers over the use of violence. They did this, and then they ringed the meeting house with their bodies because they knew the cops wouldn't shoot a bunch of white Quakers to get the Black Panthers. And the Quakers didn't have to participate with the Black Panthers, but they acted in alliance. And what I wish is that the permaculture wing would see themselves as the, as the breadbasket of a revolutionary movement. And so that's my critique of, of permaculture. I think it's really important. And I, I, I wish that, and you know, it's pretty interesting because some, some permaculture people have, um, it just hasn't happened for a long time, but it used to be that some permaculture people would critique me for talking about resistance. And what's interesting is, I don't even know their names, but I actually got some emails from some of the, like, who are some of the hoity-toity permaculture people? Wayne Weissman, Judd Watt, Seth Holzer. Yes, I think. Well, I don't know. It was, like, it was a long time ago. Anyway, I got some notes from some of the, the big ones who said, yeah, they, we really agree with resistance. It's just like some of the, the people who are just learning it were not there. Anyway, so that makes sense? Yeah. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's absolutely important. Once again, 2% of the IRA picked up weapons. I mean, somebody's got to feed them. And that's just as important. You know, Harry Tubman was bringing people out on the Underground Railroad, but they need some place to sleep. They need something to eat. That's absolutely crucial. So yeah, it's vital. How about a woman now? Uh, we'll, do, we'll do one woman than another. Thanks. Um, so there's a lot of fracking that happens here. And so there's like this giant opposition for it. And there's a lot of um, legislation that's being passed right now that's really, 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 really heavy on surveillance and defining terrorism and defining with these loose, vague terms. You know, if you inspire radicalism, you're actually using the word radical to define terrorism, and I wonder if you could speak about that a bit. About what? About which part? Um, about how to work with that. Yeah. It scares the hell out of me. Yeah. And, you know, okay, DGR, Deep Green Resistance, the book came out last May or whenever it came out, and it came out a couple months late because uh, before we released it, uh, we sent it to attorneys and we got letters back that you never want to get back from attorneys when you write a book, which is seven pages single space of the laws you're violating. Um, so we had to change some language. Um, and there was, there was this, I'm scared of this stuff every day. And there are, I think I have three, either three or four civil rights attorneys basically on call. You know, I've got like the home numbers. Um, this whole thing scares me. It's, it's, I take it very seriously. But we also can't let it stop us because, and in fact, their repressive measures are why we have to fight back. Because if it weren't a repressive state, they wouldn't do this. Which is like, thank you very much, Derek. This doesn't help at all. So louder, louder is better. No, I think more is better. I think more and more people, because you know, okay, one of my heroes is Zoya Kosmo Demyanskaya. She was a member of the the um, Russian resistance in World War II, and I can't say this without crying. She um, she was captured and tortured by the Germans. The only information she gave was her name, and she gave the wrong name. They hanged her the next day. The last thing she said was, before she got hanged, is you can't hang all 250 million of us. And we need to be smart, and we need to not fall into obvious traps. We didn't weaken DGR. But there were some word changes we could make that would give us protection under the First Amendment. 
So we need to be able to use the master's tools in that way as well. So we need to push up against the laws, and then we need to push a little bit farther. And And we need to work within the system to attempt to change the most outrageous of the laws at the same time that we recognize that this is the ratcheting of the iron cage and it's going to continue. And and it is the job of those of us who are above ground to put big fucking bullseyes on our chests. And I mean, that's my job. And and they can't imprison all three hundred million of us. Yes. <laughs>